Okay, so on notes 5-3, we're going to be adding and subtracting rational expressions. So whenever you're adding and subtracting with fractions, because that's what rational means, you have to have a common denominator. If the denominators are the same, then you're just adding or subtracting the numerators. So notice on number 1, the denominator is n minus 2 on both of them. So we have a common denominator, which means it will stay as n minus 2. And then we're only subtracting the numerators. So I have n minus, now right here, when you're subtracting more than one term, you need to put it in parentheses because you will have to distribute that. So when you distribute, you get n minus 3n plus 1 over n minus 2. Okay, once you've combined your numerators, you're going to combine like terms on the top. So that would give you negative 2n plus 1 divided by n minus 2. Okay, so you need to check to see if you can factor the top. And negative 2n plus 1, we're not able to factor. Okay, so that would be our answer there. All right, let's take a look at 2. Notice here that we have only one term for our denominator. We have a 2x squared, and then we have a 4x. If it's only one term, to find your LCD, which is least common denominator, <clears throat> you're going to use factor tree. So you have to have a common denominator in order to add the fraction. So I'm going to start with the 2x squared. I'm going to write LCD here, which is the least common denominator. I have a 2, so I'm going to bring that down. And then x squared means x times x. So I'm always bringing down everything from the first denominator to find my LCD. Looking at the second denominator, I need to use factor tree on the 4, so 2 and 2. Notice I already have a 2 on my LCD, but I don't have two of them. So I have to bring that second 2 down to form the LCD. And then I already have an x, so I don't need to bring another x down. So my LCD would be 4x squared. Now, this one was pretty easy to find that, but when you get to larger numbers, it's going to be a little more difficult. So that's why it's easier if you use factor tree to find that LCD. Okay, so we need to um, figure out what we need to do in order to get our denominators to be 4x squared. So if you look at the first fraction, your denominator is 2x squared. I want it to be 4x squared, which means I would need to multiply it by 2. If I multiply the denominator by 2, I have to multiply the numerator in order for that to stay equal, because 2 divided by 2 is just a 1, so I'm multiplying basically by a 1. So my top now, my first fraction is going to be a 2 over 4x squared. Okay, so looking at my second fraction, my denominator is 4x, but I want my denominator to be 4x squared. So I would need to multiply by x. So if I do that to the bottom, I have to do that to the top. So on top now, I'm going to have a 5x over 4x squared. Okay, so now notice that the denominators are the same. So I'm just adding the numerators. I'm going to put the x first. So 5x plus 2. And my denominator stays the same when we're adding and subtracting fractions. From here, you need to check and see if you can factor the numerator, 5x plus 2, and we can't. So that would be our answer there. <clears throat> okay, so now notice on 3, the denominator, we don't have one term. So you only use factor tree to find the LCD when you have one term. But we have two terms, and then we have two terms. So to find my LCD, if you have more than one term, you're going to factor, like we've been doing, but notice we can't factor x plus 2, so I'm just going to bring that down to my LCD. And then notice we can't factor x minus 2. If we don't have, if there's more than one term and it doesn't look exactly the same, you're going to bring it down to form the LCD. So I'm bringing down the x minus 2. Okay, looking at the first fraction, my denominator is x plus 2 but I want my denominator to be x plus 2 times x minus 2. So I would need to multiply the first fraction by x minus 2. When I multiply the 3, I distribute and get 3x minus 6 
over x plus 2 times x minus 2. Do not multiply the denominators there. Keep your LCD in factored form. So I'm going to keep it as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Looking at your second fraction, in order for the denominator to be the LCD, we would have to multiply it by x plus 2. <clears throat> so notice here that we're subtracting. So when you distribute, make sure you take the negative 8. So that would be negative 8x minus 16 over x plus 2 x minus 2. So now we're just combining our numerators and keeping the denominator the same. So denominator will still be x plus 2, x minus 2. And we're combining like terms. So I'm going to combine the x's. That would be negative 5x. Combine the constants. That would be negative 22. So once you combine your numerators, then you're checking to see if you can factor the numerator. Five at negative 5x minus 22. We can't factor it, so that would be our answer. Okay, let's look at four. Notice we have more than one term for our denominator, so we're going to factor it. So if you look at the first one, x squared minus 9 is difference of two perfect squares. So to factor it, that would give us x plus 3 and x minus 3. So my LCD, I always bring everything down from the first denominator. So I'm bringing down an x plus 3 and the x minus 3. And then look at the second denominator. Notice it's x minus 3. We already have an x minus 3. So we do not need to bring that down again. If we did, it wouldn't be the least common denominator. So my LCD would be x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, so looking at the first fraction, notice my denominator is already how I want it, so I don't need to do anything to the first one. I'm just going to rewrite it. The second fraction, I need to multiply by x plus 3. So I'm going to have to multiply using FOIL here, so that's going to be x squared plus 3x minus 7x minus 21. So when I combine those x's in the middle, that's going to be x squared minus 4x minus 21. And again, do not multiply the x plus 3 and the x minus 3. The reason you don't multiply those is because we are not combining those. You're combining the numerators, so that's why you have to multiply. Okay, so then we're going to combine only the numerators, so I'm combining the x's. So that would be x squared, 8x minus 4x is 4x, minus 21, over your LCD, x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, so then check your numerator, see if you can factor it. The sum would be 4, product would be negative 21. So that would be x plus 7, x minus 3. So then notice, once you factor the numerator, that you have terms that are the same on top and bottom. So we can cancel those two out, and you're left with the x plus 7 over the x plus 3. We can't cancel the x's out because x plus 7 is not the same thing as x plus 3. So that would be your answer. Okay, looking at 5. <clears throat> We have more than one term for our denominator. I can't factor the x plus 6, so that's going to be part of my LCD. Just bring it down. Looking at the second denominator, the sum would be 4, product would be negative 12, so that would be a positive 6 and a negative 2. 
Notice we already have the x plus 6 as part of our LCD, so we need to bring down the x minus 2. Okay, the first fraction we need to multiply by x minus 2. So I'll have to use FOIL here. So we get 2x squared. Combining the middle terms, that's going to be 2x squared minus x minus 6 over your LCD. And then looking at the second fraction, notice that it is, it's already our denominator that we want, so we don't need to do anything with it. But we're subtracting more than one term, so remember you need to put parentheses. that. I get negative x squared minus 3 and I'm going to combine the numerators. So negative 2x squared or 2x squared minus x squared is x squared. So we have a minus x and then negative 6 and negative 3 is a negative 9. And then we have x plus 6. Okay, so the numerator here, we sh we're checking to see if we can factor. The sum would be negative 1, product would be negative 9. Notice that there's not anything that will add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 9, so we won't be able to factor that numerator. So sometimes you're able to and sometimes you're not. Okay, last one. Notice that there's only one term. So when there's one term to find the LCD, you're using the factor tree. Notice I can't use factor tree on 5, so I'm going to bring it down. x squared means x times x, so I'm bringing down two x's. And then I also have a y on that first denominator. So I bring everything down from the first denominator. Second denominator, I can use factor tree on 25. And then the y, y times y. So notice I already have a 5, but I don't have two of them, so I have to bring another one down. And I already have a y, but I don't have two of them, so I need to bring another y down. So we're just multiplying all of those together. 5 times 5, we get 25x squared, y squared would be our LCD. Okay, the first fraction. My first denominator is 5x squared y, which means I would need to multiply by 5y in order to get that LCD that we want. So the top, 5y times 3, we would get 15y over 25x squared y squared. The second fraction, I have 25y squared for my denominator, so I would need to multiply by x squared. So on top, that would give me 6x cubed over 25x squared y squared. So we have a common denominator, so now I'm just adding the numerators. I'm going to put the x term first, since it comes first in the alphabet, 6x cubed plus 15y over the denominator. And then see if we can factor the top. Notice that they have a GCF. They have a 3. So we're going to take that out. You're left with 2x cubed plus 5y. And then notice we're not able to reduce the 3 and the 25, so that would be our answer there. Okay, so in order to add or subtract rational expressions, you have to have a common denominator. So you have to find the LCD at the beginning, and then you can adjust each fraction in order to um, combine the numerators.